to the channel. So, today's a bit of a bizarre video because Ben's in work, Ben's not here. It's just me, me, myself and I, and I'm gonna do my nails. I'm gonna paint my nails, yeah. And I thought whilst I'm doing it, we might as well have a little chat and I might as well answer some girly talk questions. So that is the plan for today's video. I'm going to answer, I reckon, around 10 questions is my goal. And um, you can get to know me and we can have a little bit of a one-on-one -on -one time because why not? And I can talk you through my nails at the same time. So on with the show we go. My colour options. I'm aiming for a Christmas sparkle. That's a red Christmas sparkle. That was my original goal for today. So that's what we're aiming to strive towards. But my Christmas jumper that I have is red and pink. And it's like, it's from River Island. If you know, you'll know. Um, so I'm going to try and help I hope, I hope to do red and pink sparkle. I don't know how we're going to get that. I do actually have like a lot of like, pro not professional, but like a proper nail stuff. Like I've got a, a, a lamp and everything um, because question number one, why do I have all that? A long time ago like a year, two years ago, I actually was going to become a nail technician, but I never did the course. So I purchased all the, the stuff to be a nail tech and to like practice, um, but I just never did the course. So that's fact number one. So I think it's going to go for this red I think is what I'm going to go for. Can you see that? Where's the camera? There. That actually looks a lot more orange in the camera, but that's what the goal is. So I'm going to start by prepping the nail base with this little tool. So whilst I'm doing this, we're going to go to question number two. And that is, what do I actually do? So... I don't actually do anything at the minute. I don't have a job. Um, no income because I used to be a swimming teacher and a lifeguard. I also used to do like a bit of reception and things like that um, in the place that I used to work. However, we no longer do that. I felt that swimming teaching, which was which was my main job, I like was employed as a swimming teacher. So... I had done that for five years. So I started when I was 16. I'm now 21. So I've, I did that for five years. And it was, it was a great job. Loved it. Loved the actual job of it all. Like loved teaching kids. It was mostly kids to swim. It was quite like a rewarding job. I actually really enjoyed getting like you get to know your kids and you get to like see them progress each week and some of the kids that I taught started like when they were like babies and then like fully taught them through all the stages to swim so it was quite a rewarding job but I think for me personally I just couldn't see myself doing it for for a long time it was never something that I would really like super passionate about like I enjoyed it whilst it was whilst I was doing it but I decided to change my path so that's what I'm doing now I'm looking to start a new path I've no idea where that's going to end up but you're going to come along the journey with me and you're going to help me figure out what I'm going to do with my life together um, but yeah, speaking of, I actually went to university as well. So I, I started when I was 16 and then went to college. So in the UK, you're 
when you finish high school, you finish high school at 16 and then you go to college for two years and then you go to university for three or four years or more, dependent on what you do. So I went to college and it was in the middle of a COVID. So it was very like my last year, I only did half a year. So I went to college. We didn't actually do, I didn't do my A-levels because I was the year that didn't do them because of covid so they gave us like predicted results was what we got um but anyway i got into university to do biology i did two years in university i was on a foundation course so it was a four-year course and at the end of the second year the first year was all online at home but then the second year, um, we had to go in and it. I was commuting from home. So I found it really hard to, to mingle and get in the mix with people. And at the time I was struggling with quite bad anxiety. So I couldn't, I couldn't really like throw myself into it with all these new people. And I didn't, I didn't know anybody, had no friends. And it was very like all very distant because it was still like a bit of COVID. So they were like, you still had to keep your distances and you were still wearing like all the face masks and things like that. So you couldn't really connect with people. And I just found it really hard to study with no, nobody, no friends or anything like that. And the course itself wasn't really for me. I think looking back at it, I should probably have not gone. But, you know, everything happens for a reason. Onwards and upwards we go. So I don't know what I'm going to do next. No idea. That's where we are. Prepping the nails. Prep done. We are on to the base layer. So I'm going to be putting my base gel onto my fingers, then popping it in there machine so next question is how do you deal or manage mental health i think this is a really good question because everybody at some point in their life will struggle with mental health and honestly i think it's a subject that's not talked about enough like Everybody I know, I've ever known, has had some kind of issues with mental health. And I think anxiety and depression and things like that, like I experienced it a lot. Like I said, when I was like in going through university, I struggled a lot with anxiety and I at first didn't really understand what I was kind of experiencing and like my mum and dad would say oh Ellie go on go into university like you'll you'll love it like it's for your future it's for your career blah 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 and I just couldn't do it and it's such a strange feeling because you don't like I didn't particularly understand it and I didn't really understand where it was coming from but I ended up speaking to a therapist and this therapist was really really good she was actually a grief grief she specialized in grief and I'd actually just lost my granddad at the time so I was struggling quite a lot with like grief and that's where a lot of my anxiety was coming from but through this therapist and through having the therapy I actually learned so much about myself that I never knew before because nobody had told me so now I find it so important to get up every day go on a walk make sure you eat breakfast like eat your food because like if you don't eat for a long time like if you you're lying in bed or whatever and you you're not getting yourself up you'll actually feel worse having a little bit of food 
helps a lot and helps boost your mood so does going on a walk getting some fresh air so does things like chatting to people like your family like make sure you're putting time in the day for things you want to do and i know now that if i do that and if i make sure that i'm doing a tiny little thing every couple of hours for myself it makes me feel tons better so when i am dealing with things like grief or even something not as as big as that it helps massively like make sure you're making time for yourself in the day and make sure you're doing things that will help you like moving like nothing massive like don't go to the gym and do like a a massive workout you don't have to run on the treadmill for an hour or do like a massive weight session nothing like that just get yourself up get yourself moving get out of bed and just doing something so small will make such a big difference to your day like that's the thing that i've learned most of all anything that you are dealing with in your head mentally will become a lot smaller and a lot more manageable because you'll you'll have have the space in your head to deal with it like that's my number one tip like okay next question what are your goals for the future so i actually think there's so much pressure i was talking to ben about this actually we were saying that we think there's so much pressure on young people from the age of 18 to 30 to get everything done in those years so like you need to get married have children meet the love of your life you need to buy a house you need to get your career set up and ready to go like you need to be you need to do everything you need to travel like before you're 30 and like it's so silly because I'm only 21 now but if I could tell anything to my 18 year old self it would be to slow down like there's so much pressure for like young people to jump themselves into a career and jump themselves into a, a like high profile job and to be able to do that you have to put so much work in and so much effort so how are you meant to find the love of your life and find a a, a boyfriend or whatever and then get married have children all before you're what 35 at the latest like you've got such that's such a small window in your life if you're hoping to live a nice healthy happy life till like 90 that's only 10 years of your life like slow down like the future is like it sh should be hopefully 50 plus years if like more at least so pace yourself take your time don't stress like i'm 21 i've been to university i've worked in quite a few different jobs and i've not found my calling in life like i've been a swimming teacher i've been a lifeguard i used to volunteer i've i've done so many things by the age of 21 and i still have no idea like you hear of these people like my mum my mum grew up and she was like i want to pursue a career in it and she found that at 16 and she's gone and pursued a career in it and she's now nearly 60 so she's had that calling but i've not had that calling i've had no calling ben's not had a calling like if you don't get a calling there's nothing you can do if you don't feel like drawn to one career path then there's nothing you can do about it so you know what don't stress about it like your future is a big future so if you need to take a few years to kind of establish who you are and what you want from life like in terms of 
the nine years as opposed to the ten years like it actually will take a lot of pressure off and it you'll be able to get the things that you want quicker so that's the biggest thing i can say about that i'm on to painting my nails this red color i think let me check it it should be it's like quite a darkish red because it's going to be layered up so it'll come out a little bit different on my nails after so this is going on and then i'll show you because it's just clear at the minute it's just plain jane clear so next question is why did we start youtube that's a very good question for you because it's actually a unusual answer so we actually started youtube because when i was in university just just it was my second year so it was where i was like struggling a lot with anxiety when ben used to go into work i used to really struggle being by myself like and i just used to like my mind just used to spiral if i was if i was by myself and when he was in work i used to really struggle because he'd be in work for like eight hours so i just kind of be sat there and like you have one thought and then that leads on to another thought and then you just end up in this big like spiral of a, a mindset so i obviously watched loads of youtubers because it's, it's fun to do helps you relax so ben said to me he was like why don't you just try vlogging your day so a you keep track of like how you're feeling throughout the day and you can see whether you're in good moods or bad moods and you can kind of judge your day better because at the end of the day you can sometimes make the day feel worse or you can make the day feel a lot better than it actually was and it's important to kind of see what kind of day you actually have so what i was started doing was i was like videoing myself and i was saying how i was feeling what i was doing how that makes me feel and that's originally and i'd send it to ben so ben would be kept updated with like what was going on and whenever he could message me or reply he would do but like that's how we started and then we kind of sat down and were like hang on like this is actually quite fun and it's actually really really good so we both started doing little challenges and stuff because it was great fun and like it really helped so that's that's why we started next question is what are our plans for the future so i'm partially answering this for ben as well because we obviously want to have a future together so obviously holidays are our main priority it's a lot more easier to go on holidays if you've got a lot of money so we're just taking it slow we're getting around the world as cheaply as possible um but we are next going to paris just after christmas so i think middle of january so that's where we're going next that's next on the bucket list we've got nowhere planned after that um but we do want to go around europe we've been to spain we want to try and go to italy if we can um so that's in terms of like the future future but in terms of, of like big wide future we are trying to save to buy a house which takes up forever like is so hard to buy a house nobody tells you how hard it is like school doesn't teach you how complicated it is to buy a house and how much money you actually have to have to buy a house like me over here with no job and no plans for the future it's really hard to save to buy a house but even if i did have a job and was having an income it would be even harder to buy a house still it would still be hard to buy a house like you've got to save for years and you've got to like plan it out and with the cost of living and stuff it makes it so much harder to to get there but obviously that's like our long-term goal and it does take a while that's our next step 
hopefully in the next five years but you never know might come earlier top tip for mental health everything happens for a reason if you want it and you hope for it every second of every day one day it'll eventually happen i've got no evidence whatsoever to prove that claim however it's a nice theory to have to make sure that your mind stays positive around these slightly depressing times i've just finished my nails they are a red for christmas i was going to do red and pink but i changed my mind on that because i was like it was just far too complicated with the colours so I went for this plain, it's a more of like a brighter red as opposed to like a darker red. But you know what, I sometimes prefer the brighter colours, like make your world pop a little bit, do you know what I mean? Like if it's too like neutral, like I'm not a big fan of the whole neutral thing. Like I do like to be quite, you know, colour pop vibes, that's, that's the vibe I feel especially for Christmas, you know, get the big sparkly 3D, that's not right, like bright coloured lights out there. Honestly, will make a world of difference to your life as opposed to neutral lights. Anyway, that is the end of my video. Go and get yourself some chocolates. Go and have a lovely chill night in, watch a film, your favourite film, go and treat yourself, enjoy a gorgeous night by yourself, treating yourself to your favourite things because everybody deserves it, especially now, today, because why not? It's nearly Christmas as well, extra reasons, go and do it. And I will see you in another video with Ben, because Ben will be in the next video. I don't think I could do another video by myself. To be fair, I could because I can talk for absolutely ever. So if you want to see more videos like this, comment down below.